Brakate Yahoa, Brakate Yahoa Shai, Kohala and La Yahoa, Bahasham, Yahoa Shai, Brahaha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahoa is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasha means in the name. Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barcha Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way we could worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel of truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings to you brothers, you few sisters that may be watching as well, and, to, and, 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 and unto your households. Um, not sure what I'm going to title this lesson, but it's a response to the uh, the big bro out in Vegas, the Elder Karada's up. And um, you can see the title of the lesson. It says, Always Abounding in the Work, Showing Enthusiasm. And um, beautiful lesson. I encourage brothers to check that lesson out. You know, he went into the word enthusiasm, you know, which uh, means inspired by God. So it, it literally means, man, that the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah is working within us to, to perform this work, man. As it is written in the book of Job. Right. There's a spirit in man, but the the most I give him inspiration, roughly paraphrasing the word inspire means to breathe in. You know, and this is exactly what the Lord did. He breathed in me into me the inspiration to do this lesson. Right. To land back off the big bro, you know, because uh, I, I finished this lesson. Then I started, as you can see here on the screen, I started watching the Apostle Gabar. And, you know, the spirit had me meditating on some things that, you know, the uh, the bro the bro said so hey i paused the possible bars lesson and, and 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 here we are right now you know he the brother brought out corinthians second corinthians 9 this is the book of second corinthians 9 and 6 it says but this i say he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully now the brother went into sparingly and as you see down here in a Strong's definition, it says stingily, right? Stingily. Now, a synonym for stingily. Let's see if. Uh, if they got it here. And uh, cheaply. scanty stingy i'm glad they say a stingy meal i'm glad man i'm glad i'm glad they said that because that's the angle i'm going to go into you know because this is a a feast right the lord is preparing a table that we can sit and eat spiritually at man you know and as we uh, and as the lord called us to be prophets and teachers and evangelists we are preparing a table for the rest of the believers man right now <clears throat> I'm going to just look it up because a synonym to that word stingy is niggard. See? Perfect. Niggard. Niggard. <laughs> niggard. Niggard, right? A stingy or ungenerous person, man. Right? And this is the word I pretty, I pretty much want to harp on. Because when that brother went into the definition and, and, and he brought and he mentioned stingily, this is the word that popped in my mind, a niggard, right? Now, the scripture speaks about a niggard and we ought not to be a niggard with this with, with, with this word. <clears throat> this is Sirach 14 and 10. A wicked eye envieth his bread and he is a niggard at the table. At his table, meaning stingy. Right? And and, and and the example of this is um I'm thinking of uh spirit just put it in my mind. What was the nigga name? Nabal. Let's get that, man. Let's get that. Now this is the book of uh First Samuel. I just started one right here. It says now the name of now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Right. Now, when you scroll down and you read about Nabal, <clears throat> go 
because when so like, hey, bear with me. Spirit just, you know, gave me this, this lesson, you know, just, just, just through the spirit. Because King David asks, you know, for pretty much, you know, sustenance, some water, a little food for his men, for taking care of Nabal's men. <clears throat> and what did uh, and how did Nabal repay him, right? So like it, bear with me. Yep, verse 36. And Abigail, and Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king, <laughs> right? Meaning he had a bountiful table, but yet he was a niggard toward King David, man, toward the house of David. And that's spiritual, man. See, the house of David is the believers. It's the true worshipers. And we can't be a niggard concerning this knowledge unto them, man. It says, like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was merry within him. For he was very drunken, wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. And it's a beautiful story that brothers can go back and read. And the key word I want to go into is Nabal, which his name means a fool, man. Nabal means fool, right? So we ought not to be a fool with this knowledge. We ought not to be a niggard with this knowledge. <clears throat> Back in Sirach 14 and 10, a wicked eye envieth his bread, and he is a niggard at his table. Because keep in mind, I mentioned how the Lord is preparing a table before us, right? This is the book of Proverbs 9 and 1. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table, right? So all the food is prepared, man. The beast is slain, cooked. Right? Seasoned well. The wine, right? Is aged, is spiced. So the feast, the table, is prepared, man. And we, as what? As the master of the feast, right? In Yahweh Shah stead. This is uh, Sirach 32 and 1. If thou be made the master of a feast, lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Take diligent care for them, and so sit down, man. Well, hey, because what did Yahweh Shah tell us, man? He didn't come to be ministered unto. It's Mark 10 and 45, for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. It's the same thing as us to be a servant, attendant, to serve, wait upon, to minister, to wait at a table and offer food and drink to the guests, man. And the food and drink is this knowledge. It's the living water. It's the bread of life. Going back to that prop. <coughs> <clears throat> so like it going back to that proverbs 9 wisdom have uh, uh, slain her beast prepared the table man and we as ministers servants of this table we should provide the food in due season and we ought not to be a niggard at the table going back into what sparingly we have to do this enthusiastically right just lamb backing off the elder bro man let's go back and it says, lift not up thyself. What do, what, what, what do it say? The greater thou art? I think that's in Sirach. Um, I know Yahweh shall wash the disciples' feet. Example. John 13 and 15. I started 14. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet as a servant would, right? 
ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Once again, we have, we have been called to minister. We have been called to serve, right? Man, there's another one, and I can't properly word it. I can only think of the one in Sirach. Yep. Matthew 20 and 25. That's why it says, that's why Sirach says BS, BS. Let's, let's, let's read that again. Sirach 32 and one, if thou be made the master of a feast, lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. This is the book of Matthew chapter 20 and verse 25. But Yahweh shall call them unto him and said ye know that the princes of the gentiles the heathen exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them and we see this example playing out within these other camps man these guys are, are, are exercising authority over their congregation man and these things ought not to be so right verse 26 uh just recently watched um apostle uh taha uploaded a video with um a, a former member of of, of uh israel church and god and christ man you know the comfy group you know and he was talking about how they 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 enacted a um a 20 percent uh um uh, a tithe man which the word tithe means 10 percent <laughs> but 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 they enacted a 20 percent man damn right but it says verse 26 but it shall not be so among you but whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And once again, it's the same as us. It says that the most, uh, the most I sent forth his son to lay down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for the brethren, man. That's first John, the third chapter. So going back. Sirach 32 and one, if thou be made the master of a feast, Lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Take diligent care for them, and so sit down. And when thou hast done all thy office, take thy place, that thou mayest be merry with them, and receive a crown for thy well-ordering of the feast. And ultimately, man, the crown is what? The completion of the work, man. <laughs> you see? For the well-ordering of the feast, man. Of this word, properly giving them the meat in due season, as Yahweh Shai, right, instructed us to. <laughs> Man, I don't know which one I want to get. Uh, I'll read both. Matthew 24 and 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household <clears throat> to give them meat in due season, right? Food nourishment, man, that's key right there. Nourishment to nourish the believers, man. Luke 12 and 42. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward, the manager of household or of household affairs, especially a steward manager superintendent to whom the head of the house being our lord yahweh Shai, or proprietor has entrusted the management of his affairs the care of receipts and, and, and expeditions and the duty of dealing out the proper portion to every servant and even to the children not yet of age Ooh. come on now man See, this definition, man, it touches all, man, from the believers just now waking up, right? Just now hearing this word, just now believing in, in, in Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah, to those who have been laboring for however long. And the duty of dealing out the proper portion to every servant and even to the children not yet of age, man. 
Hey, metaphorically, the apostles and other Christian teachers and bishops and overseers, a house distributor. You see? To give to give uh, the meat due, man. Right? Verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath, man. So this is the mentality we should have, man. Looking forward to, to the coming of our Lord. Right? There's a precept where it says that uh, when he knocketh, he may open immediately. So this is the mentality that we have, man. Luke 12 and 36. Man, the same chapter. Uh, uh, Luke 12, I'm going to start at 35. I'll start at 34. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if we look at this knowledge as a treasure, if this word is a treasure unto us, we're not going to be sparingly with this. We're not going to do this grudgingly. We're going to do this uh, willingly, man, understanding the gift that's been bestowed upon us, the opportunity and the grace that has been gifted to us, man. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Man, I kid you not. The, from the beginning of this lesson, this was the precept that was in my spirit, man. I was thinking to myself about the, receiving that crown for the well ordering that our Lord is going to serve him uh, himself. Man, 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 you can't make this up. Verse 38. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so and find them so blessed are those servants, man. So that the Lord can be pleased when he returns it. Oh, man, my servants is well taken care of. Right. My household is, is ran properly. Man. And this is what the Lord has entrusted us with, man. So, you know, I don't want to make it long and drawn out. You know, I just wanted to, you know, add on to the elder. Uh, uh, I hope and pray this was edifying to water Yahweh. <clears throat> Baha Sham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Sham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of a great millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel of truth and necessarily always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, salutations to you brothers, you few sisters that few sisters that may be watching as well shalom be not a nigger at, at, at the lord's table shalom